Alright, the complete car list for EA Sports WRC has been revealed. Let's see how accurate my predictions actually were. Hi there, my name is Sim and welcome to Sims Racing. Yesterday afternoon the development team behind EA Sports WRC revealed their complete car list. So in today's video it's only fitting to see which ones we're actually getting as well as see if I was anywhere close with my predictions. However, before we get stuck into that, I'll quickly go over a few other bits of news first. Earlier this week we saw two articles from Tom Henderson appear on the Insider Gaming website. Now, Tom is known for obtaining information that isn't public knowledge yet, so we need to consider this to be not officially confirmed news. Also, if you want to check out those articles yourself, you'll find links to them in the description below. Right, the first article discusses the topic of moments mode. It states that these moments will be somewhat similar to the daily challenges from the Rally 2.0 and focus on the most memorable moments from the 50 year history of the WRC. Every day a new memorable real life WRC moment will be available and players will be able to recreate them in game. The reward for completing them will depend on how good your performance was. Tom also provides an example of such a challenge which goes as follows. Tanak won at the 2022 Rally Finland in incredible fashion. The win is marked as a moment because it marked the return of Hyundai's previous impressive form and was a remarkable comeback by one of Hyundai's lead drivers. At this moment the player needs to complete three different challenges. Be airborne for at least 30 seconds, complete the event by taking no damage and finish in first place. Moving on to the second article which concerns the locations in EA Sports WRC. It states that each location will have 35 kilometers of unique roads, which would be fantastic and exactly as I predicted. But also that you'll be able to play each of the locations in four seasons throughout the year, apart from the snow event. Whether you'll be able to select whichever season you want at any time or you will only have the option to select winter conditions during the winter period still remains to be seen. Now we know all the locations from the 2023 WRC calendar will be present which include Monte Carlo, Sweden, Mexico, Croatia, Portugal, Sardinia, Kenya, Estonia, Finland, Greece, Chile, the Central European Rally which will be released post launch and Japan. However the 5 remaining locations are still more or less unknown. The article refers to those as follows, Scandia, Iberia, Pacifico, Oceania and Mediterraneo. Based on that we can be very certain that Scandia refers to Norway, Iberia to Spain and Pacifico to Indonesia. I did speculate on the latter two in my previous video and seeing those names I'll stick to that prediction. Oceania is going to be New Zealand and Mediterraneo will be Corsica. With those short news snippets out of the way, let's dive into the main section of the video, the reveal of the complete car list. If you want to have a look at it yourself, there is a link to the list in the description below. We already knew about the Rally 1s in the WRC class, the Rally 2s in the WRC 2 class and the Rally 3 Fiesta in the Junior WRC class, so there's no need to go over them again. In other words, let's start with the WRC 2017 to 2021 class. Personally, I was hoping for the Citroen C3 and the VW Polo, but suspected to see the Ford Fiesta and the Hyundai i20. In this case, I was neither right nor was I wrong. Basically, we got a mix with the Ford Fiesta and the VW Polo. So at the moment, I'm pretty happy with that. Next up we have the largest car class, the WRC 1997 to 2011. As expected we see the Dirt Rally 2.0 roster make a return with the Citroën C4, the 01 Ford Focus, the 07 Ford Focus which will be updated to the 2008 model, the Peugeot 206, the Skoda Fabia, the 98 Subaru Impreza S5, the 01 Subaru Impreza and the 08 Subaru Impreza. Since last week we already knew about two other cars in the class as well, namely the Citroën Zara and the Mini Countryman. So that leaves us with two spots to fill in. I myself predicted the Peugeot 307 and the Seat Cordoba Evo 3. The latter did make it in which is absolutely fantastic as I've always had a bit of a soft spot for that car. The Peugeot 307 however didn't make the cut. Instead the final car added isn't exactly a new one. The Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6 was moved from the Group A class to the WRC 97 to 2011 one. Some of you might be a bit confused but it actually makes perfect sense. Yes, officially it is a Group A car but this particular version was competing against the WRC cars in real life and beating them as well. The Lancer was outperforming any of its rivals in the Rally 2.0 by a huge margin so it makes sense to place the car amongst its true competitors, the early WRC cars such as the Subaru Impreza S5 from 98. Personally I would have loved to see the 08 Impreza being replaced by the 06 one but we can't have everything can we? 
The next class is Rally 2. For this one, my predictions were spot on. I expected the old Ford Fiesta R5 as well as the Peugeot 208 T16 R5, which is exactly what happened. The Rally 4 class is where things get somewhat odd. Now, I do know that the old R2 class was renamed Rally 4, but I did expect all the latest Rally 4s to be present. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We do have the latest Ford Fiesta and Peugeot 208 Rally 4, but not the Opel Corsa or the Renault Clio. Instead, we get the Opel Adam R2 and the Renault Twingo. The Fiesta and 208 should outperform the Adam easily and the Twingo even more. I suspect licensing was the culprit for not having the Corsa or the Clio, but still, a missed opportunity in my opinion. For the NR4 slash R4 class, we basically knew what was coming already. The DJM McRae R4, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10 and the Subaru WRX STI NR4. My predictions for the Super 2000 class were almost correct as two of the three made it in. I was right about the Fiat Abad Grande Punto and the Peugeot 207. The third one I didn't expect but is a nice surprise nonetheless, the Opel Corsa Super 2000. When it comes to the Super 1600s I only scored two out of four. The Citroen C2 and the Renault Clio made the list. Meanwhile, the Opel Corsa and the Suzuki Swift or even the Polo did not. Instead, we'll have the Citroen Saxo Super 1600 and the Ford Puma Super 1600. I had my suspicion that the Ford Puma would be in the kit car class, but there was a Super 1600 version as well, so I'm very happy about that. Somewhat odd that two out of the four are Citroëns, but I can definitely understand why. Loeb rose through the ranks in a Saxo Super 1600 and several others such as Auger, Sordo and Meek showed their potential in a C2 Super 1600. Then we get to the F2 kit cars. We do see the return of the Dirt Rally 2.0 roster with the Peugeot 306 Maxi, the Seat Ibiza kit car and the VW Golf Mark IV kit car. I also predicted that one spot would be filled by either the Ford Escort Maxi or the Ford Puma and another spot by either the Renault Clio Maxi or the Renault Megane Maxi. Personally I would have gone for the Puma and the Clio but instead we'll have the Escort Maxi and the Megane Maxi. However I'm not sad about those that we got because both are very cool cars and we do see the Puma in the Super 1600 class. For the final one I was convinced that we'd have the Citroen Zara kit car as it's arguably the most iconic and definitely the most successful kit car but unfortunately that didn't happen. Again I suspect licensing or actually finding one of these cars to scan and record was a bit of a pain in the butt. Instead we will see the Vauxhall Astra kit car which looks absolutely brilliant and will be fun to check about. Then we get to the Group A class. As was expected, we see all the Dirt Rally 2.0 cars such as the Ford Escort RS Cosworth, the Lancia Delta HF Integrale, the 95 Subaru Impreza and the Subaru Legacy RS make a return. As was mentioned earlier, the Lancer Evo 6 Group A also made a return but was moved to the WRC 97 to 2011 class. In its place comes another car from the same brand, the Mitsubishi Galant VR4. A very interesting choice indeed as this one competed in the late 80s and will be the oldest Group A car in this class. In the four-wheel drive Group B class we've got the iconic bunch we all expected. The Audi Sport Quattro S1 E2, the Ford RS200, the Lancia Delta S4, the MG Metro 6R4 and the Peugeot 205 T16 Evo 2. The same goes for the rear-wheel drive Group B cars where we have the BMW M1 Pro car, the Lancia 037 Evo 2, the Opel Manta 400 and the Porsche 911 SCRS. In the rear-wheel drive H3 class there's one car that got replaced by another. So we have the BMW E30 M3 Evo, the Ford Sierra Cosworth RS500, the Lancia Stratos, the Opel Ascona 400 and the Renault 5 Turbo. The car that has been replaced is the Datsun 240Z, a car I was actually fond of. Instead we have the McRae Motorsport Ford Escort Mark II. This one isn't your regular 265 horsepower 2 litre BDA Group 4 Escort, but rather an Escort housing the tremendous 330 horsepower 2.5 litre Millington engine. However, that doesn't mean the former has disappeared completely as it's still present in the H2 rear-wheel drive class together with the Alpine Renault A110 1600S, the Fiat 131 Abarth, the Hillman Avenger, the Opel Cadet C GTE and the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. Glad to see that my predictions were 100% accurate here. In the H2 front-wheel drive class we do see a bit of a surprise and a good one at that to be honest. I was convinced we'd see the return of the Peugeot 205 GTI and the VW Golf GTI but I didn't expect this one coming, the Peugeot 309 GTI. I was expecting the Vauxhall Nova Sport instead but due to the fact that it would be outperformed significantly by the others it didn't make it here. 
That being said, it did find its way into the H1 front wheel drive class where it will be joined by the Lancia Fulvia HF and the Mini Cooper S. I did find it somewhat strange at first to see the Nova in here as it's several decades younger than the other two and never competed against them directly. However, when it comes to its power and performance, it does fit here rather well. Now that we're finished going over the revealed car list, it's time to end the video. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and if that is indeed the case, feel free to like the video. Want to support Sims Racing even more? Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It helps the channel reach more like-minded people such as yourself. Enjoy the rest of your day, good luck and goodbye.